If you were to ask someone what's causing your insomnia, they might say something like, oh, my stress, my anxiety, my brain won't shut off. Maybe they think it's their cat waking them up or they drank too much coffee or watched a scary movie before bed. And granted, all of these things can mess with your sleep for a night or two or, or more, but they aren't the thing that causes chronic insomnia. Yes, fantastic. Yes, so anxiety, depression, PTSD, that thing that occurred 10 years ago that you're linking your insomnia to now, that stressful event that's happening in your, in your life at the moment, all these things, they can and do cause a short-term sleep problem and they can affect the quality of your sleep, but this is not the same as insomnia. So what turns a short-term sleep problem into long-term chronic insomnia are the behaviors you do afterwards, which teach the brain a new pattern of sleep and the resultant thought patterns which create the fight or flight response. And I'm gonna be talking about that a lot more later on in the video, but yeah, Insomnia is a primary condition. It is not a symptom of something else. So in most cases, chronic insomnia is caused by one bad habit where you accidentally trained your brain not to sleep. The bad habit is staying in bed awake. This is the worst thing you can do for your insomnia. So it's a slight oversimplification. Yeah, there's a lot of things that contribute to insomnia. I see the same patterns over and over again, but yeah, and certainly spending a lot of time in bed awake in a really anxious, hyper aroused uh, state does not help, but there is more to it than that. Insomnia. And it's key to one of the most effective treatments for insomnia, CBTI, an evidence-based treatment for insomnia that has shown up to 80% effectiveness at relieving insomnia. You see, when you... 80% is about standard, but all CBTI is not created equal. And if you were to work with someone who had their own chronic insomnia for 20 years, your uh, success rate is going to be much higher. Lie in bed awake. Maybe you went to bed too early or you're trying to force yourself to sleep and you're worrying about all the things, you know, what you said that day. You cannot go to sleep unless you are sleepy. So sleep is created internally and unless you're sleepy, you cannot sleep. So especially if you've got insomnia, only go to bed when you can't keep your eyes open sleepy and please stop trying to force yourself to sleep because it is literally impossible and what's gonna happen with your job, and whether that one guy likes you, or any, any number of other things. You're basically training your brain that the bed is the place for worrying and lying there awake. This is a paired association. It's like Pavlov's dogs. They learned to salivate when the bell rang, even when there wasn't any food around. When you lay in bed awake, your brain learns that the bed is the place for worrying, for thinking, for watching shows, for doing homework, whatever it is that you're doing. You lay down in bed and, and your brain thinks, oh, I know this place. This is the thinking place. So without realizing it, you trigger that worry reaction and then it takes hours to fall asleep. So that worry reaction, I like to use an analogy. So say you've got a good sleeper who goes on a camping trip to a national park and just as they're about to drift off, they hear the howl of a wolf next to their tent. So their heart rate, body temperature, adrenaline, cortisol, that all go through the roof because their brain is putting them in a fight or flight state in order to mask their drive to sleep in order to keep them safe. So when you've got insomnia, it's like you've got a wolf in the bedroom all the time because the brain it cannot tell the difference between an actual physical tangible threat like a wolf and a perceived threat like insomnia. So that is something you need to tackle um, with CBTI, which is what Emma's talking about in this video. So one aspect of the most effective treatment for insomnia is if you can't sleep, get out of bed. If you can't sleep and it's been more than 15 minutes, get out of bed, do something that's not too stimulating. And then when you start to feel drowsy, go lay back down. So I 
CB, uh, the 15 minute rule is traditionally taught in CBTI. It's not one I personally like because uh, people with insomnia become incredibly obsessive around, around sleep duration, they clock watch, and what it does is it just trains the brain to think, oh, you know, has it been five minutes or 10 minutes, or maybe it's been 20 minutes. And I find that rule creates a lot of anxiety uh, with people. So what I like to say instead is, if you feel calm, you feel happy, you feel relaxed when you're in bed, absolutely fantastic. If you stay there and allow sleep to come, it will, because being in bed awake in a calm and happy, relaxed state isn't the problem. Being in bed in an anxious, stressed and worried state is, and if you start going into that state, that's when you should leave the bedroom and do something you find relaxing and enjoyable. I know this sounds miserable. You're probably thinking, oh, I'm just gonna be so tired and this will just make it worse. Then yes, that's true. You may be more tired in the short term, but within a week or so, it's most likely going to improve your sleep efficiency. So that's the percentage of time that so yeah, um, overcoming insomnia is about shifting the focus away from trying to sleep well in the short term or get as much sleep as you can in the short term in order to overcome your insomnia in the long term. And yeah, when you said about, um, I know it's going to feel miserable, really I like to try and help people look forward to doing their stimulus control by saying things like do something that you would absolutely love to do uh, when you're awake at night time. So that way you're far more act, um, likely to actively choose to do it. That you spend in bed actually sleeping. So just remember this, right? Get up, hang out, try again, right? Get up, go sit quietly in another room, hang out, do nothing, or you know, read a soothing book. If you lay there for more than 15 minutes, get back up, hang out, and then try again when you feel sleepy. Now, while this feels miserable, it works really well. You may feel sleep deprived for a couple of days. So yeah, again, you know, trying to shift the focus away from it being a miserable thing to do and thinking about all the amazing benefits you will have when you do overcome your insomnia and Try not to use the word when try again because that is something that can drive insomnia as well, that effort behind trying to sleep. So you may have noticed that you can be calm and happy when sat on the sofa and then perhaps you're feeling sleepy as well. And then when you crawl into bed, you're instantly alert. So yes, there is that conditioned response of the bed being a place of worry and wakefulness at play there but it's also the shift in intent. So when you're downstairs, you're not trying to sleep. When you're in bed, you're trying to sleep. That's the intention. Wakefulness becomes something threatening. Wakefulness becomes something undesirable. You start making effort to sleep. You start trying to sleep. And that's what also causes you to feel alert as well. So we really wanna try and let go of this trying and this effort. But in the long run, it's very effective at treating insomnia. Getting out of bed does two things, right? It retrains your brain that the bed is for sleeping and not other stuff. And then it also builds up like this sleep pressure, basically that tired feeling. So that when you do lay down, you've got more internal drive to sleep. Yes, yeah, so that sleep pressure which Emma's talking about there, so the actual name for that is the sleep drive or the homeostatic sleep drive. So yeah, it is literally impossible to make yourself sleep because the only thing that makes you sleep is your sleep drive and the sleep drive is created internally and the only thing that builds your sleep drive is wakefulness and the better quality day you have, the better quality sleep you will have at night time. So I like to shift the focus away from doing everything you can to try and make yourself sleep at night to doing fantastic behaviors during the day to build that sleep quality so you naturally fall into a lovely sleep at night time. <laughs> And again, this is a core principle of CBTI. It literally rewires the brain to sleep better. So yeah, um, 
It is a core principle of CBTI and it's incredibly effective. There are other techniques you can use as well if for, for whatever reason you can't get an out of bed uh, for perhaps some mobility uh, issues, for example. There's something else you can use uh, called counter control and you'll find that in my other videos. But it's incredibly powerful, but it's really important to stress that it should not be used in isolation. So say somebody is in bed for 10 hours, but they only need seven hours of sleep. If they start doing um, stimulus control, they're going to be in and out of uh, the bed like a jack in the box because they're going to be in bed awake for three hours. So stimulus need control needs to be used in conjunction with reducing your time in bed as well. And really it needs to be used in conjunction with the thought pattern change techniques because this is really what drives and perpetuates insomnia. So it's incredibly common for people with insomnia to start doing literally um, a thousand and one things they, um, in order to try and make themselves sleep and doing a thousand and one things um, to try and protect their sleep as well. So if you do stimulus control with the wrong intention as just another one of those things you're using to try and make yourself sleep, it has the potential to be a little bit problematic. Um, so yeah, insomnia, it's so anxiety, stress, worry driven, and people with insomnia do have a huge amount of obsession around their sleep. And so quite a lot of work does need to be done to tackle this as well. So when I help people, um, when they're working with me, I start with behavioral changes because these are usually easier than thought pattern changes, but all the time I'm introducing thought pattern changes just to remove the anxiety, stress, and worry around sleep. So it's a fantastic video. She's covered some brilliant points there, but to do it really well it is helpful to, to work with someone that really does understand it. Um, so if you do want to do that, uh, please do take a look at links in the description um, where you can work one-to-one -one with me. I've helped literally thousands of people sleep just like you. I'm incredibly good at it because I understand it incredibly well. All right, um, please check out all my other videos and I will see you on the next one.